What is up everybody and welcome to Tools Day. This is gonna be called Tools Day because it sounds really cool and I'm tired of thinking what we're gonna call it. So Tools Day is gonna happen on Tuesdays and we're just gonna to talk tools. It could be anything from reviews to my thoughts to a new unboxing of a tool that just was released, really anything tools and it's gonna happen on Tuesday, hence Tools Day. Now let's get into what today's video is all about and that is gonna be framing nail guns. And more importantly, kind of the transition from pneumatic, which is where I started, up until today where we're using purely cordless battery powered framing nailers. So let's get right into it. So here we have a bunch of nail guns and we're gonna go ahead and start with the first nail gun I ever owned. Real quick story, I was just getting going on my own personal house. This was way back before I even became a business owner and I was remodeling and I had a ton of uneven floors and I was putting beams to get them all trued up and get them to be nice and flat. And I was driving nails all by hand for days it felt like until someone said, hey, why don't you just get a nail gun? I went out, I bought this nail gun, and it was a game changer. What these do on site for contractors every day is almost something that we can't fathom because 50, 60, whatever years ago, everything was done by hand. So this gun here holds a special place in my heart because it showed me a little bit about production. But like all good things, the era ends and now we enter into cordless nail guns. I started my very first cordless nail gun with this Pazload. This is a battery powered gas operated nailer so it uses battery to fire a gas cylinder, kind of like a car or a combustion engine. Here we've got my second cordless nailer which is the DeWalt and this thing has a flywheel inside that is battery powered and when that flywheel spins up Boom, it creates friction and fires that nail, so no gas. That was an awesome um, iteration in this whole history of nailers. And then we've got the Hitachi nailer. This is a compressed cylinder inside, basically, that the battery charges. And then when you pull the trigger, boom, it releases and fires that nail. Just for the sake of comparison, this is an A5 um, pneumatic nailer. And while it works awesome, it's a great production level framer. I don't use it often because I don't like being tethered to a hose, but this is still a great option for production framers out there. So I don't want to say that you can't use a pneumatic gun anymore because cordless is so awesome. That's not the case. Uh, this is a great gun to use. And if we're really busted out a ton of framing, I'm probably gonna grab a, a pneumatic. But that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about the change in technology and the cordless, hoseless um, job site. All right, guys, so the first gas-powered battery powered, hoseless, cordless nailer I bought. Um, and hey, I'm going to probably call these cordless and I know they don't actually run on a corded power, but bear with me, it's just, for me, it's easier to say. And it basically means there's nothing tethering me back to a power source, whether that be a compressor or whatever, okay? So the first cordless nailer that I ever got was the Pazload. It took a long time for me to be convinced that a 300 plus dollar nail gun was really gonna help me. But as soon as you got the freedom to go wherever you want, this quickly became a go-to, I never busted out a compressor hardly ever again, okay? Now the things I like about this gun is it's very lightweight. It's very ergonomic. The way that it's a 30 to 34 degree angle and the way that it goes into, you know, really tight spots is nice. So it's got these awesome uh, nose piece that's great for toenailing. And just overall, it performs like you would want it to. Now, it does not do a bump fire mode. So you do have to have a sequential trigger where you're 
pressing the nose piece, pulling the trigger, and then depressing. Pressing, trigger. So there is a little bit of a, of a slower nature in the firing of this versus like a bump fire pneumatic. Also, you've got gas to contend with. So up here on the top, you've got this little uh, cylinder and you're usually gonna replace one of these. I don't know the exact nail count, but I do know it's, uh, it always seems to happen whenever you least want it to happen or you're up in a truss or whatever, this is gonna run out. So that is a big annoyance and um, it also produces somewhat of a undesirable smell uh, just because the gas is being burnt and then the fumes are being expelled through the exhaust. Now, another thing about this that was always annoying to me was the battery. So this battery, um, it lasts quite long because it's not actually being powered by the battery. It's just charging more or less the spark plug inside for that combustion. But this battery is useless to me almost on every other tool. Like I don't have a pass load framing circular saw or a uh, drill, like this is it. So unless I remember to charge it, I don't have a bunch of batteries I can just go grab because I'm using it on every other tool. One of the other downsides to the PAS load framer is its maintenance. Uh, these things are always plagued by dirty jams and uh, you're always cleaning the filters. Like because of the fact that it does a combustion chamber inside that is burning the fuel, it just always seems to need cleaning. It's not hard, but it does you know, take time and it is one of those things that is just something you should know going into it that there is maintenance to be done on this tool. Now, what I love about this though, like I said, is it's consistent, it's lightweight, and it does what you want it to do. It fires nails and drives them quite well. And one last thing, rafter hook. I know it seems crazy, but it's very important to me that a tool has a good ergonomic rafter hook and this one on the pass load there's nothing in its way. It hangs on material quite well, and that is important to me. I hate tools that have to sit on the ground because of no rafter hook. So, pass load, it's still a viable option. A lot of guys swear by pass load, and I would say um, it's a good option, but it's not my favorite. Now we enter a new era, the era, era of gas-free, battery-powered framing nail guns, and DeWalt, I could be wrong, but I think they were one of the first, if not the first manufacturer to bring a battery powered, gas free nailer. Um, and this is actually version two. There was a version before this. I think that it didn't have multiple speeds or multiple depths, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. This is the first one I owned. And right away, I loved it. I didn't have to worry about gas. Um, definitely a trade-off. This thing is a lot heavier. Now the rafter hook, uh, to me, is one of those big disappointments because you can barely fit a two by four perfectly in there, which means it doesn't hang very well on material. It's always awkward to get your hand in here. As you can see, my hand alone almost takes up that whole rafter hook area. So, you know, just a lot of this stuff on this nailer didn't seem all that well thought out, but it performs pretty well. It is fairly consistent. It does a good job driving nails, um, but it does do a lot of jams. Thankfully, DeWalt put this little lever here on the top, so when you do get a jam, usually all it takes is a quick flick of that lever and the jam is released and you can keep going, but it is kind of annoying. Now, I guess I should take a quick step back and explain to you how this gun works. I mentioned it a little bit earlier. I'm gonna go ahead and pull the trigger so you can hear what's gonna happen and I'll explain what's happening. Okay, we basically have to wait about 20 seconds for that flywheel to stop, but there's a flywheel in there that the battery powers, it spins up, and when the friction, uh, actually I take that back, once it hits a certain RPM, it allows you to pull the trigger, and the friction of that flywheel spinning shoots the driving pin and fires your nail. So it's kind of a cool technology, but it is annoying in the fact that the noise is a little bit you know, bothersome, and the speed at which you're able to fire is a little bit slow to react, in my opinion. But what I love about this gun is that I use a lot of DeWalt tools, and with that, 
I use a lot of DeWalt 20 volt batteries. So it's so nice to be able to have the flexibility that almost no matter what, I never have to worry about gas and I've always got DeWalt batteries ready to go charged in my tool trailer. So this, this tool is almost, it feels like free to run. And compared to the pass load where you keep buying gas, that was a big plus for me, but it just didn't have the consistency and depth of drive or the toe nailing capability, you know, or just the cumbersome feeling that I really just wanted something different. So that brings us to the Hitachi Framer. This is a brushless um, framer. It's got a compressed cylinder in here that is supposedly lifetime warranty, never has to be maintained. It will always work. And the way it works is there's a cylinder that has a compressed gas. I don't know what type of gas, if it's just air, the battery charges it and it creates the pressure that when you pull the trigger, boom, it fires the firing pin and sinks your nail. Now, some of the things I like about this nailer is its power, it's quiet, it has great response when you're pulling the trigger, either in sequential mode where you're just having to pull the trigger every time you fire, or bump mode where you can hold down the trigger and just go to town. Um, it does take a little bit of practice to kind of feel it because you can't just go like crazy, but we'll show you that later. There's a couple things though that I don't like about this nailer, and they jumped out at me right away. First thing, was the rafter hook. This is the rafter hook that came on this nailer and it was one of the first things that I had to replace. I don't know what Hitachi was thinking, but this is what came on this gun. And I mean, I've never seen anything like it and it was so cumbersome. It didn't, you know, hook over a two by four very well. Other than a top plate of a two by four wall, it's almost pointless. Uh, luckily, you can buy this adapter or this rafter hook and it was the best thing I ever did because you can see there's tons of clearance so it hangs on two by material really well. The other thing that I kind of found annoying is the switches down here and I think it's a safety feature but you have to hold on the power button to turn it on and then you have to, if you let's say walk away for a little while, this thing will turn off so you have to keep holding the button on to make sure that it can shoot a nail. Also, you You've got your button down here for bump mode or sequential fire and there's a little battery gauge but the Hitachi battery gauges are basically pointless because it only gives you a uh, two bar reading so it's like you're half full and then all of a sudden you're dead you don't know but that's a whole nother story. You've got an ad adjustable depth here for your setting of the nail. I'm not gonna lie this nailer is still quite heavy when in comparing it to the PAS load but I feel like of all the nailers I've talked about, this nailer allows me to do the job well, and it's quiet, and it uses a battery, once again, that matches a lot of tools that I use, which is the Hitachi 18 volt battery. Now, like all tools, there is no perfect tool. So I'm hoping that Gen 2 of this Hitachi or Gen 3 of the DeWalt, I hope they only keep getting better, and I hope that by having the feedback, you know, from users and guys like me and guys like you, that, uh, these tools, they keep getting smaller, they keep getting more powerful, they keep getting cheaper, because none of these are cheap, but they totally change the game on how we do our jobs on the job site, and that's what's most important. But enough talking about all this different stuff, like let's do a little bit of real test into some lumber, just to kind of get a feel for what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and just do a couple tests, just firing the nailer so you can get a feel for what they sound like, because I definitely think they all sound differently. Um, they all operate a little bit differently, but they're all shooting the same nail. This is a paper taped uh, 30 to 34 degree nail this is a common framing uh, we do have a full round head and you know nothing special these aren't ring shanks but this is what you're gonna see a lot on a framing site at least doing residential framing we're gonna go ahead and we'll start with the pass load first and I think the biggest thing to note is that there's no bump fire mode on the pass load it's got this nice aggressive tip and um, it's fairly quiet so let's go ahead and shoot it just so you can see what it sounds like
Now, I don't know if I'm gonna keep that in there because that was like annoyingly long, but this thing does take a while to cool down and to expel that exhaust from the combustion of that gas. It does a really good job firing nails and it's pretty consistent depth. Now we're gonna move to the DeWalt. You're gonna hear that flywheel ramp up and I have to wait for that to basically hit that high RPM to then pull the trigger because if I don't, it won't work. Once again, there's this noise while the flywheel spins down, but I think you probably heard that when it spun up, in preparation for firing, there's a little noise that kind of comes with it and that kind of signifies that it's ready to go. If you didn't catch that, just rewind it. You'll probably hear it the next time. Now, when coming to the Hitachi, usually the annoying thing is I've got to make sure that it's on because it doesn't just sit there ready to fire like the other two. But once it's good to go, notice how much quieter this thing is, both in pre-shoot and post-shoot of the nail. So you've got that real quick boom fire and then that's it. There's no recoil, there's no exhaust noise, there's no flywheel slowing down. It's just that compressed cylinder fires and then it's ready for the next one. Now I know a lot of you might be thinking, okay, but can I use these on my framing crew? Can I be at a production level? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fire all three of these as quickly as I can, just to show you really what the capabilities are. And we'll start with the PAS load. Now I'll go to the DeWalt and I'll put it in bump fire mode so once I spool up this trigger, I'm okay, I can just keep firing nails. Now with the Hitachi, I'm gonna make sure it's on and I'm gonna hold down the bump fire till it flashes so we're good to go and let's see how this does. So as you can see, there's a little bit of a delay on all of them, and usually with either one, you're going to kind of get a feel for how they fire so that you can get that groove. And if you guys were to go, and I'll try to tag the video, the build series when I built Jimmy DeResta's shop, I actually only had the Hitachi cordless, and we had to laminate all of the trusses from a single ply to a double ply truss. And I was so impressed with the production level of this nailer, so go check that video out there if you want to see really the capabilities because I went through a ton of nails in a short order with this gun. So there you have it guys. These are the cordless, once again, not cordless, uh, but cord free, hose free, whatever. These are the nail guns that I use on site, the ones I have used, kind of the you know growth that I've gone through and I am currently using the Hitachi all the time. I don't want you to take these you know simple tests my opinion as like code, like this isn't exactly the way it is. There might be guys out there that swear by the PAS load, the DeWalt or the Hitachi, that's fine. This is my experience. This is what I've seen over the course of many jobs, even many years of using these guns. And I'm hoping, because none of these are perfect, that by having conversation, by talking about all these pros and cons, the manufacturers are out there listening and they're making better versions of these guns because thinking back just 10 years, which is not a long time, we were not using anything like we are today. So it's exciting to think where this stuff can go and how much better it can get. But I'm pretty happy with where it's come in just a short time. Um, like always, you know, I'll put these links down below. You can go look at them. None of them are cheap, but they will make your job on site so much easier. Even if you're just a DIY guy, it's nice to just have that quick option to go grab and hit some two by nails real quickly. Obviously, I've said it before, I also do a ton on Instagram at RR Buildings, and I'm using these tools every day, building massive posts frame structures. So, you know, definitely go check that out if you haven't already. I would appreciate it. Uh, you know, get engaged in the feed, ask me questions. That's what it's all about. But also, I use them here on YouTube doing a bunch of build series where I take you through 
almost step by step the process of our buildings. And if, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that bell so you're notified the next time RR Buildings pops up another video. And like always, I appreciate the support. And hey, I can't wait to have you back on Tools Day next week. So thanks a lot.